The model has the following capabilities. Uh, first of all, it's a generic model, a mathematical model for SOS architecting with multiple attributes such as cost minimization, performance maximization, and deadline minimization. And also, we have provided efficient solution methods for uh, this model. Basically, we uh, constructed an evolution algorithm which can be modified for different settings of the model as well. And this model returns a set of architectures uh, that are efficient. What I mean by efficient, they will have good performance, good cost, and good deadline values. Also, this uh, model enables doing what if analysis such as what happens if selected attributes such as performance, cost, and deadline of the systems change. So let's say a system can uh, provide a capability with better performance value, how the architecture will change. Uh, furthermore, we can do weather analysis on what happens if some of the selected systems are not available anymore or they cannot provide the capabilities that they could. Or we have new uh, additional, uh, uh, additional systems that can provide different capabilities. So this model enables doing such weather analysis. The value of the model is that uh, the model formulates practical settings of SOS architect uh, architecture generation and most importantly, we consider fund allocations to the systems. So here we consider that the architect can invest in systems to improve their performances. And as I said, the model considers different objectives in creating an SOS and returns a set of efficient SOS architectures for the decision maker. And the decision maker can select, depending on his or her preferences, a SOS architecture from the set of uh, efficient solutions that we have returned. The potential application of this model, uh, first of all, for this project, the application of the model is before we start the negotiation process with the systems. So this model will uh, suggest the SOS architect some architectures that, when negotiated, will result in good performances. Also, the model can be applied in any SOS uh, domain, such as logistics, supply chain, uh, network-centric systems, cyber-physical systems, are some of the examples. And possible feature capabilities would be modeling the negotiation within SOS architect, uh, architecture generation. So we can include the negotiation process within this model and try to generate uh, meta architectures. We can model the competition among the systems. So the systems can be computing to be included in the architecture. So this can be modeled within this model. And we can model the flexibility of the systems and we can try to incorporate methods to incentivize uh, uh, systems to become flexible. Actually, that's what we are doing in the second uh, version of this uh, project that I will talk at the end of my presentation briefly. And the nice thing about this model is that it can be modified for different settings easily, and the solution approach can be mo modified very easily to capture different practical settings. So let's look in into the details of this uh, model, meta-architecture generation multi-level model. The uh, purpose of this model is that before starting the negotiation between the systems and the SOS architect, the SOS architect can initially select a, so a set of systems when negotiated we result in efficient architecture. So that's the idea of this model. We want to provide the SOS architect with some uh, architectures that when negotiated will result in efficient uh, SOS. Therefore, we have the multi-level meta-architecture generation model, and it considers const constructing a SOS such that each capability is provided by at least one system, so the overall SOS is capable uh, in providing every capability requested by the mission, and the systems in the SOS are communicating with each other through interfaces. And furthermore, we consider multiple objectives for generating an SOS, so we don't have a single attribute. We have different attributes, and specifically we consider maximization of total performance, minimization of total cost, and minimization of the deadline of the SOS. And the most important part is that we consider initial contracts with systems to improve performances. So here, in this model, the SOS architect can allocate funds, which means he can invest in systems so that the systems can improve the performances of the capabilities that they can provide. Here, the systems will decide on how to use the funds allocated 
in improving the capabilities that they can provide. So I will talk about the details of this model now. So it's a, a multi-level optimization model because we are modeling the decision making at different stages of the uh, problem. We are modeling the decisions of the SOS architect and we are modeling the decisions of the systems. And it's a multi-objective multi optimization model because we are simultaneously considering different attributes such as cost minimization, deadline minimization, and uh, performance maximization. So in the big picture, this is a Stackelberg game. Uh, the SOS architect is the leader in the upper level. He selects the systems and funds are located. And the systems are followers in the lower level and they uh, decide on how to use the funds to improve the capabilities that they can provide. So in the setting of this model, we assume that there are the SOS should provide an arbitrary number of capabilities. So each of these capabilities should be provided by at least one of the systems included in the SOS. So we assume there are n capabilities, and capabilities are indexed by i. And we assume that there are M systems indexed by J, and each uh, system can provide different capabilities. So we define AIJ as 1 if capability I can be provided by system J and 0 otherwise. So since different systems are providing different capabilities, they might have different costs, different deadlines, and different performances for providing different capabilities. Therefore, we define DIJ, CIJ, and PIJ as the deadline, fixed cost, and performance of uh, system J for providing capability I. So what are the decisions of the SOS architect? So basically he wants to build a SOS and therefore he should decide on which systems go are going to be in the SOS. So we use, uh, we denote SJ to be one if system J is included in the SOS architecture and zero otherwise. Once we have uh, systems, we should have interfaces between them, so which is a decision variable for the SOS architect. So we use uh, yj1, j2 to denote an interface selection between systems j1 and j2. Basically, yj1, j2 is 1 if an interface is selected between systems j1 and j2 and 0 otherwise. And the other decision variable uh, of the SOS architect is the fund allocated to each system. So we denote uh, fj to be the amount of funds allocated to system J by the SOS architect. So what will happen with these funds is that the system J will use these funds to improve the capabilities, uh, performance of the capabilities. So I will talk about this more when we talk about the system's decision making. But here, we define a function for performance depending on the funds allocated. So PIJ of FJ is the performance level of system J in providing capability I when funds FJ are allocated to system J. So the attributes that we assume SOS architect will consider as minimization of total cost, and the total cost is equal to the summation of the cost of the capabilities uh, asked by requested by the systems plus the cost of the interfaces, plus the funds allocated to the systems. And then the SOS architect wants to minimize the deadline. The deadline of the SOS is the latest completion time of each system that are going to be in the SOS. And the completion time of a system is the latest uh, completion time of the capabilities it can provide. Therefore, we have this maximization terms. And finally, the SOS architect wants to maximize the performance, which is the summation of the performances of the capabilities provided by the systems. Here we assume an additive performance function because it can capture the practical uh, setting, practical definition of the total performance of an SOS, particularly, for instance, if a capability is provided by multiple systems, the performance would increase. So this function captures that. Furthermore, if the performances of different capabilities have different uh, values to the SOS architect, we can use the weighted approach. We can give weights to different uh, capabilities performances and again sum them. So therefore, we again will end up with a linear relation uh, of the capability performances with the total performance of the SOS. However, our solution approach can uh, be modified very easily to capture any kind of 
uh, performance function, deadline function, or cost function. So these are the assumptions that we made, which are uh, practical and represent the realistic uh, case. But again, as I said, the solution method can be easily modified to capture different settings. So overall, the SOS architect's problem is to minimize the total cost, minimize the deadline, deadline maximize the total performance such that each capability is provided by at least one system, so we have a capable SOS, and there is an interface between any pair of selected systems so that the whole SOS is connected, communicating with each other. Now let's look at the decisions problem. So there is a fund allocated by the SOS architect to the system, so the decisions of the systems are how to use those funds in improving the performance level of the capabilities. So let's say a system can provide a couple of uh, capabilities and there is a fund allocated by the SOS architect to that system. So the system can use all of the funds to improve one of the capabilities or he can uh, partially allocate funds to each capability to improve their performances. So here the decisions of the system are the funds used by the system to increase the performance level of the capabilities. And here we uh, assume that this uh, system J can improve the performance level of capability I by PIJ hat at a unit cost. So when X money invested in improving the capability I, we will get a PIJ increase in the performance of capability I by system J. PIJ0 is the initial performance of capability I by system J. So when there is no fund allocated to that capability by that system, PIJ0 is the uh, performance level. And capital PIJ is the maximum performance level achievable with funds in providing capability I by system J. So which is, this is a realistic assumption because we know that the performance level cannot go to infinity. Therefore, the uh, PIJ as a function of the funds allocated by system to capability I is equal to PIJ0, the initial performance, plus the improvement in the performance by using the funds. And the objective of the system is to maximize the total performance impro uh, improvement using the total funds allocated by the SOS architect to the system. And but while doing so, he cannot use more funds allocated than what is allocated then uh, by the SOS architect. So when we combine the uh, decision problems of the SOS architect and the systems, we have our SOS architecting with individual system contracts. So at the upper level, we have a multi-objective uh, model for the SOS architect in constructing the SOS architecture. And the lower level, we have the systems problem, which will define the contracts by the SOS architect. So here we are solving SOS architecting and uh, contracting in an integrated fashion. So let's look at how we solve this problem. First of all, this is a, a multi-level problem. And even the simplest uh, multi-level optimization problems are very complex to solve. Therefore, generally heuristic methods are used for such problems. And we are uh, using an evolu evolutionary heuristic method for solving the SOS architecting with individual uh, contracts. And this algorithm has two phases in it. Phase one is system selection. So which system should be in the SOS? And phase two is uh, system contracted, so how you should uh, build contracts with the selected systems. So here what we will do, we will first solve phase two. We will decide on how to make contracts with the selected systems. Then using the contract decisions for our selected systems, we will uh, decide on which systems to select. So given the system selected, the problem of SOS architect is to determine the funds allocated uh, that will be allocated to each uh, system, when you increase the funds allocated, your total cost will increase. But when you increase the funds allocated, your total performance will increase as well. So there's a trade-off between the funds allocated in improving the performance and increasing the cost. So again, there is a multi-objective optimization problem, even if the system selections are given for the SOS architect. Therefore, what we do, we uh, select the Pareto efficient contracts for the given set of systems. What I mean by Pareto efficient, efficient solution 
or Pareto efficient contract is that there is no other contract that is better in terms of performance and cost at the same time. So Pareto efficient contract implies that there is no other contract that's higher in cost or uh, lower in cost and higher in performance at the same time. So we are finding efficient contracts given the set of uh, selected systems. After that, we focus on phase one, which is system selection. So here we are trying to find which systems to select. And we already know how to uh, build contracts for given uh, systems. So we use this contracting in selecting the systems. So let's say an SOS uh, is given. So we solve uh, phase two. We determine the set of contracts for this SOS. Then to compare this SOS with contracts to another SOS, again, we generate the contracts for the second SOS. And we compare the SOS with contracts to another SOS with contracts. So if one of these has better uh, performance, lower cost, and lower deadline compared to the other, then the other is eliminated. But if uh, we cannot uh, say that one uh, SOS with contracts dominates the other SOS uh, with contracts, both of these uh, SOSs are efficient in terms of cost and in terms of uh, performance and deadline. So that's the basic idea of the evolutionary heuristic method that we uh, constructed for the meta-architecture generation multi-level model. But uh, this two-phase evolution algorithm was computationally not efficient because it was taking too much time to solve the problem. Therefore, we uh, try to come up with some modifications of the solution algorithm so that we can solve the problems faster but still efficiently. And we came up with two uh, modifications. One of them is capable to decomposition method. Here what we do is we decompose the problem uh, into smaller subproblems and each subproblem is creating an SOS for one capability. Then combining the SOS created for each capability, we generate a whole SOS which is capable of providing every capability. And then we find the uh, efficient solutions among the set of uh, SOSs created. The other method is the extreme funding method. So remember in the original two-phase evolution algorithm when we contract, uh, when we solve phase two, system contracting, we generate a set of Pareto efficient contracts. But here, instead of generating all of the Pareto efficient contracts, we generate only two uh, contracts, which are the extremes. Uh, what I mean by the extremes, for a given SOS, the architect will either allocate no funds to the SOS or will allocate all of the funds that can improve all of the capabilities. So we are only considering the maximum funding or no funding for a given SOS. Then using that approach, we are, construct, uh, we are comparing different SOSs. Then when we compare different uh, solution methods quantitatively and qualitati qualitatively, we see that extreme funding method is efficient in terms of solution time, and it also finds better uh, SOS architectures with contracts. Therefore, we suggest that extreme funding method can be efficiently used for solving the meta-architecture generation multi-level optimization model. But what's the whole idea of this uh, multi-level optimization model? Basically, when we don't have the modeling approach we propose, what can an architect do is the following. He can first select the systems, then con uh, uh, build the contracts with the systems. So that's not what we do in our model. What we do, we integrate the contracting decision in architect architecture generation. So if our approach is not available, a simple approach would be to first arch uh, architecture, find the architecture, then contract. So when we compare architecting, uh, the selecting the systems, then doing the contracts with our approach, we see that our approach gives uh, more alternatives to start the negotiation. Also, the alternatives that our approach suggests have better uh, performance, 
lower cost and lower deadline. So our approach is efficient for solving meta-architecture generation problems. Now I want to talk about the application of uh, multi uh, meta-architecture generation multi-level optimization problem to the toy problem. So in the toy problem, we have a control station and we have a carrier, and we want to select uh, satellites of type 1 and type 2, and we want to select UAVs. So applying how the meta-architecture generation multi-level model can be applied to the toy problem is as follows. So let's say we have different options for satellites of type 1, we have different options for satellites of type 2, and we have different options for UAVs. So based on the selection of each, the whole system will have different criticality, different strength, and different performance. So the question is, uh, which of the satellites of type 1, which of the satellites of type 2, and which of the UAVs should be selected in the whole system so that we have uh, systems that are not bad in terms of any attribute, attributes con uh, considered. Like, we want to find a system with high uh, strength, high performance, and low criticality. So our meta-architecture generation model can be uh, modified to find, determine which satellite of type 2 from alternatives and which UAV from different alternatives again and which uh, satellite of type 1 from different alternatives should be included in the uh, system. So it will, be, it will capture the multi-objective uh, nature of the problem. So uh, we will mi minimize the criticality, maximize the performance, and maximize the strength. And the question that we are going to answer with our meta-architecture generation multi-level model is which systems, different UAVs, different satellites of type 1 and type 2, and should be included. Also, furthermore, our model can capture the case if it is possible to invest in these alternatives to have better performance or better criticality or better strength. So let's say it's possible that funds can be allocated to the satellites of type 1 to improve the criticality performance strength. So our, solu our model will tell how much uh, funds should be allocated to which satellites of type 1, satellites of type 2, and UAVs so that we have better criticality or performance or strength. So that was the application of our model for the toy problem. And Currently, we're, we're working on uh, Fly SOS version 2, and I am a part of this uh, project as well. And the research question that I'm trying to answer is, how do different levels of cooperativeness in participating in the SOS impact the ability and timeliness of a group to agree on a SOS or system architecture? Or the impact the ability, of, uh, ability to effectively use the architecture already in place? So here, I'm focusing, we are focusing on the cooperativeness uh, between the SOS architect and the systems. So specifically, what we did so far is that we evaluated two cases, flexible systems and inflexible systems. Flexibility of a system implies that the system can be requested to provide specific capabilities instead of all of the capabilities it can provide. So in the inflexible uh, case, if a system is selected in the SOS, he or she will contribute with all of the capabilities it can provide. But here, in case of flexible system, the SOS architect can request only some of the uh, capabilities a system can provide. So we have modeled two mathematical uh, programs one with SOS architecture generation with inflexible system and one with flexible systems. And then we again develop some solution methods for these multi-objective optimization problems. And when we compare these two models, what we see that the flexibility is very important for the overall uh, SOS. It can improve the performance, it can reduce cost. So the question is, how the SOS architect can incentivize systems to be flexible. So that's what we are currently working on in version 2. So thank you. And the research that we have uh, conducted in this project is accepted for publication in a journal 
optimization ladder journal. So that's a very good journal in this area. And I'm enjoying doing the research in this area and hopefully we are con contributing to the academic uh, literature and we are contributing to, contributing to the practice of SOS. Thank you.